you ever look at the anatomy of an animal and wonder, what the heck is going on there? How does that all make sense? How can I understand the anatomy even better? Well, today's video is especially for you. This is going to help you out tremendously, especially because we're going to be using the knowledge that we know from the human anatomy and applying it to the animal anatomy. So here is three basic components I want you to look at. Everything's quite simplified here. It, this video is very much meant for artists. Okay. So the first thing I want you to take a look at is very simple. It's the skull. And we can see how the skull relates to the skull, the human skull. Uh, it attaches by the spine. You can see where the eye goes. You can see where the jaw is. And the next part to this is the rib cage. So we have the rib cage over here. We have the rib cage over here. And then we have the pelvis. And we can see that the pelvis for the quadruped is a lot flatter than the pelvis for the human. The human has more of a bucket shaped pelvis. Then we go into limbs. And we can see here that the limbs have similarities as well. We have the scapula, scapula, the arms, the arms. This part right here would be where it would be all the little bones in the wrist. Over here we can see the leg. So this is actually the knee. Just like on the human, here's where the knee is here. This would actually be considered what is on us, the ankle. Okay, and then all the little feet bones. And of course this is all very much simplified because it is geared towards uh, what I do, creature design. And it's for artists. So let's continue. Put them all together and it looks like this. Let's put an outline around them so you can see that the first one, this example, is more of a dog. And then the other one is a person. And you can see how the outline works with the skeletal structure. Something to point out here is that if you look at the spine, the spine is actually pretty far down from the surface of the dog. Right, you can see that the spikes on the back of the vertebrae actually get quite long and if you look at something like a cow they can get really really long and the spine is actually quite far down from the surface. You can see here same thing on the human. You can see that the neck is very much the spine there is not on the very, very back of the neck, which is what a lot of people think. You can see where the spine goes inside the human. It's not all the way against the edge there. Let's take a look at some muscles now. So here, what I've done is I've just drawn in a bunch of the muscle groups or the muscles that I felt were the most important to me. It's very much simplified. You can see all the different muscle groups. Now let's see how the human muscles relate to the dog muscles. Let's take a look at the first one. You can see here the muscle on the jaw, the neck, back of the neck, and you can see how much bigger this one is. You know, considering that the dog always has to kind of use those muscles to help lift up its head as opposed to us where we kind of balance our head on top of our bodies. We don't need such a big muscle there. Let's go on further. The different muscles here, how they relate. Also, you can see that these little bits here also relate right here along the human. Let's keep on going to the shoulders. Okay. You see the shoulder muscles, shoulder muscles, buttocks, buttocks, and more like the triceps here, the leg muscles. And you can see that the knee is actually very high up, just like how the elbow of the dog is very high up. And we wouldn't even actually normally look at that as a knee. And that's why a lot of artists, beginner artists, tend to think that the legs on a dog, are they kind of work backwards, when actually they don't. It's just that the knee is really high up, 
the ankle is really high up, and then the bones of the so-called feet are you know, of different lengths here. It's a lot more elongated than the foot over here. Let's go on to this lovely muscle that always catches some nice shadow. Uh, well, not always, but a lot of times. The leg muscles, the leg muscles here, and how they compare. And now you can see the relationship between the quadruped and the human. Now for our exercise. What I want you to do is download the file that's supplied for you in the link below and try to follow along. The whole entire objective of this is that you're going to draw your own creature and use the diagram on the left to add anatomy. And you can see that I've done my own little sped up video for you of two different examples. Very, very different animals. Yet, if you look carefully, you'll see a lot of similarities in the anatomy. Just different sizes, but they're all very much there. You can see that one animal almost looks like a ferret. You know, it has a very hunched back, very weasel-like body. And the other one, I was thinking something more along the lines of like a bulldog or something like that. Either way, I was just sketching something quick. You know, sketching in an outline real quick and then start applying the anatomy. And as you get better at this, as you practice more and more, you're going to see a lot of the anatomy that you will be painting in your outline. And that's when you know you've really started to progress because now you're thinking on a whole nother level, a lot more complex. Texture is also a great thing for creatures. You know, you definitely want to think about texture. What kind of skin does it have? And a lot of times the best thing to do when you're thinking about texture is think about, well, how does this animal live? Does it live in the ground? If so, then it would need probably what kind of skin? Tougher skin? What kind of claws? What kind of feet? Would it have web feet? Of course not. It would have claws or something like that. Um, another thing that is very important to an animal is just thinking about how it actually moves. Right? Is this a slow animal? Is it a fast animal? How does it move that fast? We have to think about that with our anatomy. All of the anatomy needs to support the functionality of the creature. So in this case, you can see that what I'm thinking here is something that is quite flexible, maneuverable, kind of weasel-like. And you can see that these little subtleties that I'm putting into the muscles line up very easily with the muscles in the diagram. That's why, even if you aren't doing this exercise, it's still great to have this diagram with you just for reference. Who knows when you'll need it later on. It's something that I constantly go back to. You know, I have tons of these kind of things in my notebooks. Notes for myself. Notes that I'll draw up myself. And it wouldn't be such a bad idea for you to draw up your own diagram. Even though I am supplying you with mine, it's always great if you draw up your own because you'll learn so much more that way. Here you can see very, very clear muscles being changed in size, in length, bulkiness, everything. However, they're generally, they're still all there, all those different muscles. And because we've seen animals all of our lives, whether in real life or on TV, in books, we can understand this. We can understand this from, a, from our kind of gut level. We can understand this and go, yes, this looks like it makes sense to us. In the end, final touch, 
Just add in a bit of texture on there. Helps to give the animal a bit of life. And the texture, as it wraps around the creature, it helps to describe the form of the creature even more. Final little simple shade of a different base tone for the top creature. And a lot of times what I would do after this is go over the ideas that I really liked and do it a lot more kind of finalized, taking my time and making it look very, very real. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel.